Hello, everyone. Um, I will be teaching you today on some effects on how to edit uh, sport montages for Adobe Premiere. Um, I will first explain to you how to add a freeze frame and reverse clips, and then I will also explain to you the color pass effect, which is a very hard effect to use. Um, it's never perfect, but I will do my best with it, and then I will explain to you um, a phantom strobe light uh, text effects, which um, is actually pretty cool. Open up Premiere now. Okay, so I just have some footage um, from, I go to Slippery Rock University, and uh, this is some footage from a football game. And so what you first want to do is if, let's say you don't have that clip in here, um, for those new people, then whenever you do have a clip, you find that file, and you want to drag and drop it right here in your project folder. It actually hasn't added any clips yet, but if you double click on it, it'll open it up in the source panel. And from here, you can uh, select a clip uh, you want. So let's say, okay. So let's just say I just want uh, this play right here. Okay. So if you use these tools, mark in and mark out, you can actually create a small clip um, in between. So that way, whenever you go to drag the or drag the clip down into the sequence, you can actually just drag and drop right here, and it will only take the section of the area that you uh, that you had inside the markings and marks outs. So first up is the uh, is the reverse and the freeze frame effect. So let's just say right here where he uh, does this little juke move. So I like the juke move, so what I'll do is I take this razor tool right here, which cuts it, and go before it, and I just take out that section in the clip. And um, So you're going to want to move anything to the right of it out of the way. This is going to help you um, a lot. And what you do is you can do it this way, and you can go up to it, and you can uh, copy the image. We want to make three duplicates of the same clip. So you can copy it this way, or you can press Command-C on the Macs, or Control-C on the Windows. And then after that, you move down here to the end of the clip. Uh, you do it twice, and you want these three same exact clips, uh, duplicates, to be stacked up from one another. So what you want to do is you want to right-click on the one in between, and you want to go to Speed and Duration, and you want to make sure that this reverse speed um, is selected. What it does is it completely reverses it. So you can see now, it may take a while to load, but it just reminds a little bit, and then he goes through again. <clears throat> um, so that's that's fairly simple for the rewind part. Um, you can do that as much as you want. You can do it quick. You can uh, make it a quick rewind. You can rewind a whole entire play if you wanted to. Um, but let's say after this, before he gets hit, right here. So let's say I want to actually add a freeze frame in here. Usually what I do is I zoom up as much as I can with the zoom tool, which is right here, and then you want to take the razor tool and you want to just cut a small section. And you want to move this out of the way again. Um, you can actually, oh, my bad. Back to Premiere real quick. Um, once this drags, you can actually extend this clip, actually, before you do that. You want to right-click on it, and you want to go to Add Frame Hold. You want to get it away from this clip, um, just because I feel like sometimes it's faulty um, if I accidentally edit the wrong clip. And then you want to right-click on it again, and go to Frame Hold Options. 
after you go to frame hold options, I like to do endpoint. And so that way it holds it right from the beginning. And it's a really short clip right now since we're incredibly zoomed up. But if you actually extend, uh, extend the clip, all you have to do is hold your cursor over there, and that will pull up. Give it a little bit of time. Time that, and then whenever you zoom out, you can see. So I'm gonna make it a little bit longer again. It's just a little bit too short for my taste. Um, but this is especially uh, cool. Um, I know I know it doesn't seem like it just because you know it's it's a boring tackle, but let's say they make a huge hit. Well, you can freeze frame it as soon as they make contact. Um, and it um, really looks cool, just adds a really big impact to it. But after you put everything back together, you can see just this one clip. I have a rewind, and I also have a freeze frame. So that's those two. Next, I'm actually going to work on the color pass effect. And like I said, the color pass effect in Adobe Premiere uh, sometimes is very faulty. Um, it, it allows a lot of other um, colors through, and uh, you'll understand what I mean in a second. But let's say, usually for color pass, um, it's going to be best if you have a single color. So let's say this clip right here. OK. Let's go back a second before. Here. Use these mark in, mark out again. Drag the video down so it's just that one clip. You're going to see that uh, back up. So this is only 11 second clip, so it's not too long, but you can do this uh, for however long you want. And you want to go into effects. And I search it because it's usually uh, faster, but you search color pass. You can see it's under video effects, image control, and color pass. You want to drag and drop that onto there. And at first, you're just going to see a black and white image. What you have to do is actually go up into the effect controls panel and you select the eyedropper tool. And you can use whatever color you want. I would actually find a spot where you can get that color a little bit easily. Um, so see, that's not bad. But you can see uh, this green is the same color. But it doesn't allow some of it through because there's a darker color. Well, how can I get that through? Well, let's say it's furs on that. And it changes to 10. OK, looks better. Even down here in this little slippery rock thing, um, you can see a little bit of green coming through. Now you don't see it as much, but um, you can slightly see it. Um, there's like some blue light up here um, on this light post, and you can also see this person's clothes and this person's clothes. Um, and that goes away as you decrease this, but so does the um, color, uh, uh, every other color. So um, it also allows a lot less green through. So then it's going to have that kind of grayish effect um, on some of the colors. But a way that I can, uh, a way to fix this, um, it's not perfect, is, let me actually drop that back down to 11, and 10 actually. Another way that I found out how to do this, um, is I actually make a copy and duplicate this as well. Okay, and zoom out so you have both of them right here. Um, you actually don't need the color pass effect on this one. So go up to the effect controls for that one after you double click on it and take the color pass and actually take it out. Now, right now, you're going to see a lot of color because you just put the color pass on and it's going to show the top video. Um, or the video that's going on right now. So if I move this on top of this, it's just going to show all of the color. So what you have to do is you have to add a black and white filter to it. 
Um, usually this one takes me a little bit longer, um, but I believe it's actually in the same area. So here it is, this black and white one under image control and uh, video effects. You drag it on top and you're gonna see that it's black and white now. Now if I move this up here, then you're still only gonna see the black and white because it's gonna show this top video right here since it's above. But if you double click on this again, go to effect controls, and you drop down this, uh, actually wrong one, oh, the opacity, you can change the opacity. So then that way, <clears throat> let's say 40%. You can still see that, you can see the green right here, you can see the green on the jersey. But whenever you go through, um, it kind of decreases the blue. You don't see the blue as much anymore. So it's a little bit faulty sometimes, but it's really uh, finding that uh, good spot between the opacity and uh, the similarity. Um, the similarity um, it's a little bit weak. Uh, you can do things. Uh, this is a lot uh, harder, and you also have to move it frame by frame. But what you can do is if you wanted to, you can actually make a frame or a mask for the color pass. So let's just say I just wanted him. I can actually go around and I can use the pen tool to create an outline for him. But that gets uh, very, very long, very, very um, time consuming. And uh, sometimes it's still not perfect just because of how much they move. You're gonna have to go through every second and make sure that um, every keyframe that it is moving and is shaped perfectly. And, um, but I believe, take off my mask real quick, that uh, once you do a few changes with it, with the opacity, it doesn't look as bad. You can still see the green. He comes in, and that's how the color pass works. It is faulty, but um, it's a very cool effect. So I'm going to get rid of this now and move on to the uh, phantom text effect. So let's say... Uh, okay, so I have a close-up of a running play right here. So use the mark-ins and mark-outs again, and once you drop it, um, uh, you can really take any clip, but you want to go to Title, New Title, Default Still. And... Um, I honestly, this video is kind of old. I'm not entirely sure this dude's name. Uh, so I'm just going to go with Le'Veon Bell, just as an example. And I come up here to the type tool. Come over here, select my text, however long I want it. And um, say number 33. Oh. Now, I, you can do this with smaller text. But I would use bigger text. Um, I would at least take up around like 25%. Um, if you need more room, that's fine. Um, if you need less room, that's fine. But I just feel like um, the bigger the text is, uh, the cooler the effect looks. Drag this down a little bit. OK, so. I'm going to use a text without a stroke um, because we're going to add a stroke here in a second, and that's what uh, really adds to the phantom effect. Okay. So let's send it. We'll even take. Okay. Slightly bigger. Centered. And what you want to do um, for the actual uh, phantom effect, you want to go down to this fill type. And where it says solid, you want to change it to ghost. And what that does is it actually um, basically uh, makes it so it's transparent and that you can't see it. But the text is still there. So what I want to do is I want to add 
and the outer stroke right here. And once you add that, you can already see that the text comes through a lot. Um, it's kind of hard to read with it being like that. So I like to change the size of it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, just so it's a little bit easier to read, but you can still see through it. You can say that, you know, if I make it too big, it kind of looks childish, kind of looks weird. Um, I'd say, you know, a solid around 30. And if you really wanted to, um, you could change the color of the text. Or not the color of the text, but the color of the stroke. Um, so if I really wanted to, um, let's just say it's red. Okay, well, now you see that it's red. Stands out a little bit more. Um, not really team colors, but it's okay. Um, this will also help me uh, show you the difference. So I'm actually going to keep it at red right now. And then you don't have to uh, hit enter or anything like that. All you have to do is really just exit out of it. And you can see that it's added down here now in your panel. So you want to click and drag on that. And then you want to extend it uh, for however long you want. It doesn't have to be the whole video. but. And what I like to do is I actually like to make it uh, come through later. So once you click on this once and you go to Effect Controls, you can go to um, Opacity. Let's say you start at the beginning and you don't want it to be there. This will add keyframes. You move this down to zero. Put a sec couple seconds in. Uh, it will add, automatically add another keyframe. You move it up to 100. So you can see as it goes, it's time framed, and it starts. And you can do the same thing at the end, but you want to do it reverse. So you're going to have 100%, and then you're going to move down to zero at the end of the clip. Uh, this is the Mac Lab, and it's just 22 Mac computers. And so then what you want to do is you want to go to effects, because this is not the actual stroke effect yet. And um, I believe it's actually under stylize and stroke light right here. So you want to drag it. You want to drop it down onto that text. And you can see now whenever it comes in, it flashes, which looks really cool. Um, and if you go into the effect, uh, I got it wrong camera again. If you go into the effect controls panel, you can actually as well change the uh, stroke color. So let's use a very SRU green now. And then you can change uh, different things. The blend with the original, I'm not sure what that does, but the strobe duration and the strobe period, uh, you can make it faster, you can make it slower. So let's just say we want to move this down to 0.75, then move this to uh, 0.4. Now you can see whenever I get a playback, it changes the colors, goes by faster. Doesn't look bad. You can still see through the text. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's basically about it. So I know how to add a freeze frame and uh, how to reverse a clip as well as uh, how to use the color pass effect. Um, once again, uh, I know it's a little bit faulty. I know that there's going to be problems with it. Uh, it's not going to be perfect. Um, but I believe uh, adding that opacity layer uh, with the black and white kind of helps a little bit. Thank you for listening, and uh, I hope you learned a lot. Bye.